Well, this particular summit coincides, of course, with the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. And as always, uh, this was a, a moment to take stock uh, of where UN peacekeeping is today. And it comes on the back also of a, a report that has been produced uh, recently, it has come out, called the High Level Panel on, on Peace Operations. And this operation was commissioned last year to look at the challenges facing UN peace operations. And this was part of the subject matter for this peacekeeping summit. And those challenges are multiple. On the one hand, the good news is that there is still a great deal of demand for UN operations. There are about 120,000 uh, peacekeepers deployed around the world. But many of these operations are in what might be called a serious trouble, in part because they are deployed to areas where there is in fact very little peace to keep. And this holds in, true in particular for the largest peacekeeping operations in Congo and also uh, in, the, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, and what this uh, summit was about was trying to reinvigorate peacekeeping and try to answer some very difficult questions, including what is the role of use of force in these kinds of operations, and also, in particular, whether uh, Western countries or developed countries, uh, uh, countries that in many ways withdrew to some extent from peacekeeping in the 1990s, late 1990s and 80s, could re-engage. And there is some sign that uh, they are prepared to support peacekeeping again, though I think we should be very, very cautious about um, not confusing uh, declaratory commitments at a summit with, with a real uh, long-term commitment to, to build up peacekeeping. So in terms of the future of peacekeeping, what does this mean? Would we be able to see blue helmets, for example, in Syria any time soon? Does this mean there's a more willingness to use peacekeeping forces by developed nations and the United Nations in general? No, I think the, the fundamental, if you like, context to peacekeeping now, uh, which sort of came through at this particular summit, and the real big issue is that uh, geopolitical uh, tensions have changed. Relations within the Security Council, as we know, between the permanent five members are very, very poor. And this is, of course, what affects policy in a place like towards Syria. So the chances of them actually agreeing on, on deploying a peacekeeping force, let alone whether the conditions are right for, for it, are, are very remote. I think the real issue facing peacekeeping, what this means, is really a discussion again about what are the right circumstances for deploying peacekeepers. And when they are being deployed, um, what purpose are they serving? And by that I mean, are they there to reinforce a, a meaningful political process, or are they just there as a band-aid to try um, to alleviate humanitarian suffering? That is very important, but in the long run, uh, you alleviate humanitarian suffering by trying to bring around uh, a political settlement. And one of the problems with peacekeeping uh, over the past 15 years, if you like, is that increasingly um, troops have been deployed, often on a large scale, to situations where there is no peace to keep, but also where there is no clear sense of strategic direction for those troops. And, and that uh, may in many ways uh, keep a conflict from, from, from ticking over and continuing rather than addressing the root causes of it. So I think that is one of the... The, the, the profound questions facing peacekeeping, how can it be made relevant to, to support uh, mediation processes and, and, and political processes? And of course, then there are a whole set of structural issues about how to make it uh, more efficient, uh, more resources, how it can uh, improve the way it it's, uh, generates troops. Um, there's always been a problem with logistic support for peacekeeping operations, the whole range of practical issues, but I think those in some sense are secondary to the more fundamental issue, where the, the instrumentality of peacekeeping is still relevant to the kinds of conflicts in which they are often deployed today. What is the significance of the UK's commitments to peacekeeping troops in South Sudan and Somalia? I think it is, a, it is very welcome. I mean, it is very welcome uh, primarily, I think, to be perfectly honest at this stage, for the political signal it sends that um, uh, advanced uh, uh, armies uh, 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 have not abandoned peacekeeping, that we are prepared 
to deploy even in difficult circumstances. We are prepared to deploy even after the, the bruising experience of deployments elsewhere. The real test is whether this also goes along with a renewed diplomatic effort and political effort to get to the root cause of the conflict. 300 uh, British troops are not going to make a difference, a critical difference to the, to the conflicts in that part of the world. Uh, but they send an important signal, particularly if it goes alongside um, a political effort. Of course, those troops that come from Western countries often have the advantage that they bring special capabilities and might, in that respect, act as force multipliers for, for you know, larger contingents of forces. And that also might be useful. But at the end of the day, these are uh, conflicts where we need to see progress and a coordinated effort in terms of addressing the underlying and political issues at the heart of it and simply increasing the number of peacekeepers uh, is not going to necessarily resolve it and I think the best example of that now is probably Congo where we've had peacekeepers now for for almost uh, you know, close to 15 years, um, we've increased the number of troops steadily, we've engaged in robust peacekeeping um, and even, even so we are very far from alleviating completely certainly the humanitarian disaster and catastrophe that is Eastern Congo today.